in order to, to determine the number of grams of 1,2-dichloroethane based on the given quantity of the reactants, what we first would want to do is determine the molar mass. So we can start with the molar mass of C2H4. And to get the molar mass, we simply add the atomic masses of the individual elements. So for example, C2H4, we can see that each carbon has a mass of 12.0107, and each hydrogen has a mass of this value right here. We just have to be careful to use the correct number of each atom. So there are two carbons, and so we'll multiply two times the atomic mass of carbon, and then we will add four hydrogens multiplied by the atomic mass of each hydrogen. And when you do that, you will end up with a molar mass of 28.05316, and then the unit here is grams per mole. So that's how we find the molar mass of C2H4. We will find the molar mass of the other formulas in a similar manner. So let's set those up. So there are the computations. If you'd like to pause the video to make sure they make sense, feel free to do so. We have the molar mass of the Cl2 and then the molar mass of the C2H4Cl2. Let's write the three molar masses beneath each compound's formula in the equation. Our next step is to follow the roadmap listed below, and what we'll do is we'll convert the number of grams of each reactant into the number of grams of the product. So we're actually going to set up two calculation strings, as you'll see, one based on the 15.8 grams of ethylene and one based on the 3.76 grams of chlorine. Let's start out with the 15.8 grams of ethylene, C2H4. And what we're doing in this roadmap is we're starting on the far left side. We're starting with grams of a substance called A. And what we'll do is convert the grams of that substance into the moles of the same substance. And we will be doing that by using the molar masses that we just determined. Then, once we have the moles of that substance, we will convert the moles into the moles of a different substance that we've called B. And for that, we'll use the balanced reaction, as we'll see shortly. And then finally, we can convert the moles of that new substance B into its grams. So let's take a look at how we can use this roadmap to determine the number of grams of the product C2H4Cl2. Starting with the grams of C2H4, and using the molar mass, we would set it up as follows. We determine the molar mass of C2H4 as this quantity right here. And we want to make sure that we do is, since we have grams to begin with, we're going to want to place grams in the denominator of our little conversion factor, and that way the grams will actually cancel out. Now we determined earlier that there are 28.05316 grams of C2H4 per one mole of C2H4. Again, if you notice the way we set this up, the grams are going to cancel out. And right now we have moles of C2H4. So we would be at this stage of our little flow chart. From moles of a substance, we can convert it into the moles of a different substance by using the balanced reaction. We can see that one mole of C2H4 will react to produce one mole of the product. We call this a one-to-one -one ratio. So what we will do is use that one-to-one -one ratio. Remember, since you have moles of C2H4 right here, you're going to put moles of C2H4 in the denominator so that it will cancel out in a moment. And from the reaction again, one mole of C2H4 will produce one mole of the product C2H4Cl2. So now the moles of C2H4 will cancel out. We are now at this stage of our chart, moles of substance B. We're going to convert that into grams using the molar mass, which we determined earlier. So set this up very carefully. You've got moles in your numerator, so you want moles down in your denominator here, so they'll cancel out. And from the molar mass, we see that one mole of our substance is equal to 98.95916 grams of that substance, C2H4Cl2. So now, when all is said and done, these moles cancel and we are left with our final unit of grams of our substance, of our product. So what we would do next is pick up our calculators and type this in to get an answer. And when we do that, we get 55.74 approximately grams of C2H4Cl2. So this is how many grams of the product we would expect to be formed 
when we react 15.8 grams of C2H4. But we're not done with the problem because we have another number of grams of the other reactant, the Cl2. So we're going to set up a similar calculation string following the roadmap to get the number of grams of our product. So let's take a look at what that will be. Remember, you're starting with 3.76 grams of Cl2. So here we go again. We'll speed it up a little bit this time. We're going to be using the molar mass to convert the grams of Cl2 into the moles of Cl2. We saw earlier that one mole of Cl2 had a mass of 70.906 grams of Cl2. We set it up accordingly so that the grams will cancel out. Next, we'll go from moles of Cl2 to moles of our product. Remembering the ratio was 1 to 1. We can see right here that one mole of Cl2 produces one mole of the product. So we'll put our one mole of Cl2 down here, and then one mole of our product above, C2H4Cl2. We'll cancel out the moles of Cl2, and then finally we'll convert moles of our product to grams of our product using the molar mass of the product. And we recall that one mole of the product was equal to the 98.95916 grams of the product. Pick up your calculator after canceling these moles and let's see how many grams of product we would get. When we do this we get about 5.25 grams of the product. So compare that 5.25 grams of product that we got earlier with 55.74 grams of product as to which one is the correct answer, you will always select the one that leads to the smallest amount of product. We only have enough chlorine to generate this amount of the product, and therefore we are limited to that number of grams of product. So this smaller number of grams will indeed be the correct answer to the question.